Good evening, friends. This is Yana Benoon with Israeli News Live. Welcome to my Odyssey channel. And tonight we are going to discuss the fact that in Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu is definitely winning. His coalition is winning and they have passed the law in Knesset today uh, to weaken the Supreme Courts and strengthen the religious rabbinic courts. So the official religious dictatorship based on Talmudic law is uh, proceeding in Israel and Israel is definitely becoming a religious dictatorship. Let's look at some of the media reporting this. So please watch with me this two minute clip. Mass protests erupted with renewed fury in Israel on Monday after lawmakers pushed through a controversial bill overhauling the country's judiciary. Demonstrators blocking Jerusalem's main highway faced a water cannon and had to be dragged away by officers. Inside the parliament, called the Knesset, opposition lawmakers, many of whom had held out hope of a compromise, chanted shame, and some tore up documents after realizing the vote would proceed. It's a political victory for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's hardline religious nationalist coalition, but one that has provoked a political crisis and sparked the largest mass anti-government protests in the country's recent history. While coalition members inside the Knesset celebrated with selfies, outside the divisiveness was on full display. Critics of the plan say it undercuts the Supreme Court's independence as a check on executive power and hurts the country's democratic institutions. Proponents say the unelected judiciary has grown too influential. Public protests involving sometimes hundreds of thousands of demonstrators have, for months, demanded the measure be modified or withdrawn. The divisiveness even prompted some in the nation's vaunted army to warn it put military readiness at risk. Thousands of reservists had signed pledges that they'd refuse call-up orders if the overhaul went ahead. The measure had even drawn criticism from the country's ally, the United States. Here's U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller. With respect to the vote in the Knesset today, um, as we've said before, as a lifelong friend of Israel, President Biden has publicly and privately expressed his views that major changes in a democracy should be, if they're going to be enduring, must have as broad a consensus as possible. It was unfortunate that the vote today took place with the slimmest possible majority. But Monday, Netanyahu did not waver and voted in favor of the bill. He later released a statement praising what he called a measure, quote, aimed at restoring a degree of balance between the authorities. He said the government would continue to protect individual rights and warned that the military must stay out of any political controversy. Netanyahu also said he hoped to reach an agreement with opposition parties on the rest of his judicial reform plan by the end of November. But his words failed to quell the anger in the streets, as night fell demonstrators blocking traffic in Tel Aviv braved more water cannons and police on horseback, chanting the word, democracy. Okay, so despite what Netanyahu promises, never trust the government, he's not going to protect human rights or people's rights. This is a Talmudic dictatorship in its best. So um, never trust the government, right? Uh, this is total and absolute shame. Uh, let's look at other news sources here, what they are reporting about this. Israel's parliament ratifies contested law limiting Supreme Court powers. The court is now barred from overruling the national government using the legal standard of reasonableness, a concept that judges previously used to block ministerial appointments and contest planning decisions, among other government measures. So basically, before this overhaul, if rabbinic courts have um, judged uh, unjustly or or did something that people did not agree with, people had basically um, a, a way to go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court had power to overrule the rabbinic courts uh, based on so-called reasonableness. Now, this is ending. This is what has been overhauled here. 
and and this is uh, strengthening the rabbinic courts basically and people of Israel are lo losing their rights this is very dangerous in different areas of life um, this is very dangerous for non-Jews in Israel and we are going to look at who is behind this Rem I will remind you again and let's look at it together uh, very soon so here we go other uh, media here the Guardian is reporting Israeli parliament votes in Netanyahu's controversial Supreme Court changes the Prime Minister called for fresh dialogue with the opposition and pleaded for national unity as he spoke Israeli TV showed a split screen with a police water cannon spraying crowds of protesters as demonstration continued late into the night, police said they arrested a driver who hit a group of protesters in central Israel, injuring three people. Yes, this is happening. People are definitely not happy. Haaretz newspaper is reporting on uh, what is happening there. Police deployed two water cannons, mounted officers to disperse protesters in Tel Aviv. So they're basically spraying people with water. They're arresting people. 15 people arrested in Tel Aviv protest. Four officers are hurt and protesters sustain injuries from police water cannon evacuated to hospital. Other news here, White House abolishing reasonableness clause, unfortunate decision. Uh, major businesses across Israel go on strike of a judicial overhaul. So this is going to cause a civil war inside of Israel because people are not happy about losing their rights. Uh, this is a report from CNN, and I'm not a fan of CNN by no means. However, in this particular case, uh, back in November 2nd, 2022, they have reported at the truth on what what's happened in Israel Netanyahu on course to lead Israel's most right-wing government ever partial Israel result, results suggest that was back in 2022 we know that it happened now but look what they said a Netanyahu return to to the head of government would spell fundamental shift to Israeli society. It would include the newly ascendant Jewish nationalist religious Zionism, Jewish Power Alliance, whose leaders include Itamar Ben Gvir, once convicted for inciting racism and supporting terrorism. So, uh, and over here, let's read up, and Netanyahu allies have talked about making changes to the judicial system. Absolutely, it happened today, formally. Uh, that could put an end to Netanyahu's own corruption trial, where he has pleaded not guilty. Okay, so, oops, sorry about that. Uh, Let's go to the New York Times. They're also reporting defying unrest. Israel adopts law weakening Supreme Court, complaining of an unaccountable judiciary. The far right governing coalition, despite months of mass protests, voted to strip the court's power to override unreasonable government actions. This is big. This is huge because this is the beginning of official religious Talmudic dictatorship in the state of Israel. Uh, I have written the article. I told you about this so many times. Uh, so I apologize if you think that I'm uh, repeating myself, but I am encouraging you again to please go to our website, israelinewslife.org and read the article very carefully. The threat of newly formed right-wing Israeli government, a warning to Christians. I have shown you the sources for everything that I have written, how Netanyahu said in the year of 2014 on the national news that the new law that he's working on would establish the Talmud as the core work of the Jewish law, as an official basis for Israeli state law. Friends, this has happened today. Today was the first step toward Talmud being official law in Israel. So read this uh, document or article that I have written, please. It also speaks of men 
Itamar Ben Gvir, who is a huge part of this coalition and what he stands for. So let me read here a little bit. Itamar Ben Gvir is also known as an avid supporter and follower of the now deceased Rabbi Mir Kahani, a Jewish supremacist and a founder of the Kach political party in Israel, which won its Knesset seat in 1984. Kahani was active also in the United States and he founded the Jewish Defense League in New York, which FBI designated as a terrorist organization. It is interesting to know that later in 1985, Israel banned the Kach party due to its racist, violent, and anti-democratic platform, only to be resurrected by Netanyahu in 2022 by allowing the supporters of Kahani values to rule Israeli people. So who was Kahani? Here's the fact sheet. Uh, I have the source on I inside of this article right here. So all you have to do is click on it and it will take you to the fact sheet about who was Mir Kahani. Well, it, it talks about his biography and uh, his activism in the United States and in activism in Israel. But basically, it's the Kahani's ideology that's dangerous. And that's exactly who is behind Netanyahu today, is the ideology of Mir Kahani. So Kahani called for a strict separation of Jews and non-Jews and for the enslavement or expulsion of indigenous Palestinians and other non-Jews from Palestine, Israel. While in the Knesset in 1980s, he introduced a set of proposed laws which read in part, non-Jews will be obliged to assume duties, taxes, and slavery. Yes, you are hearing correctly. Slavery is part of Talmudic law. Slavery has never ended in Jewish religious law. If he does not agree to slavery and taxes, he will be forcibly deported. A non-Jew will not live within the jurisdiction of the city of Jerusalem. A non-Jew who has a marital relationship with a Jew is liable to 50 years in prison. A Jewish prostitute or a Jewish male who has an affair with a non-Jewish male, is sentenced to five years in prison. Okay, on the bottom here are even more of the Kahani's philosophy. Uh, Non-Jews in the state of Israel will be without any national rights and without any part in political proceedings in the state of Israel. A non-Jew will not be able to be appointed to any positions of authority and will not be able to vote in elections to the Knesset or to any other state and public body. Restriction of residence, a non-Jew will not live within jurisdiction of the city of Jerusalem. Prohibition on intermarriage, I already read this to you above. Jews of the state of Israel are not allowed to have full or partial marital relations of any kind with non-Jews, even outside of marriage. Anyone breaching this section is liable to imprisonment for two years. A non-Jew who has a marital relationship with a Jew is liable to 50 years in prison. Separation at beaches. Separate beaches will be established for Jews and non-Jews. A person of one people found on a beach destined for a member of the second people will be subject to six months imprisonment. Please read this fully. Read about the Jewish power. The Jewish power, Otzma Yehudit in Hebrew, is a far-right Israeli political party founded in 2012, comprised of followers of Kahani, which has been described as a legal rendition of his Kach party. Like Kach, it is virulently racist, espousing Jewish supremacy and ethnically cleansing of Palestine, Palestinians from Palestine. Not only Palestinians, I'm talking about Christians or any non-Jews or even Jews that do not agree with Talmudism or Talmudic Judaism. 
Jewish Power's platform calls for establishing a national authority for encouraging immigration of Palestinians. In 2019, Jewish Power leader Michael Ben-Ari, a former Knesset member for National Union, Baruch Marzel, Benzi Gopstein were banned by the Supreme Court from ruling for the Knesset because of their long history of extreme racism and inciting hatred and violence against Palestinians and left-wing Israelis. So here we go, Benzi Gopstein. I talked to you about him in previous videos. And you see the Supreme Court was able to ban these people well, today, the law that has passed in Knesset will prevent Supreme Court from banning them. And they actually came to full power. So this is really bad and very sad day for Israel and entire world. And soon you will learn why did I say for entire world. Okay. Um, let, let me pass this one and move here. Jerusalem Post, in March 10, 2022, last year, wrote an article, How did Chabad go from Hasidic subgroup to global Jewish phenomenon? Now, the question is, is Chabad behind this right group coalition? Well, let's find the answer. What happened um, in United Nations? This is the article by Israel National News. Oh, no, no, let's go back to this one right here. Hold on. I'm sorry. This is the article by um, website, If Americans Knew. If you have been following me for some time, or if you attended uh, some of the meetings um, that we had about uh, these subjects in the past, I have led you to a um, website called If Americans Knew. Um, they have made this video, it was six years ago, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson's involvement in Israel's security. So look at um, Benjamin Netanyahu reporting here in the uh, United Nations. Just a second. Here we go. In 1984, when I was appointed Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, I visited the great rabbi of Lubavitch. He said to me, you'll be serving in a house of many lies. And then he said, remember that even in the darkest place, the light of a single candle can be seen far and wide. Today, I hope that the light of truth will shine, if only for a few minutes, in a hall that for too long has been a place of darkness for my country. Rebbe's involvement in Israel's security. So yes, there is a direct link between Netanyahu and Schneerson. Rabbi Schneerson of Chabad Organization. And this is the article by Israel National News, published March 24, 2018. The Rebbe's message to Netanyahu, a prophecy for today. So definitely, uh, Netanyahu works for the Rebbe, okay, for the Chabad Organization and its philosophy and whatever they stand for. And one of the things that they stand for is the Noahide laws, and not only for the non-Jews in the state of Israel, because if you are a non-Jew and you live in the state of Israel, the only way for you to stay in the state of Israel will be if you agree to live under seven Noahide laws. Now, we know, and we have reported many times with Steve, that the Chabad organization has a worldwide influence on politicians, and they are the ones who are influencing politicians to bring seven Noahide laws to all the nations. So here we go. I will leave you a link for this particular article. Let's watch together this video. 
na ten jahom nikdy nerebí. He says, I have heard Rebbe's message well. Blessing and success. Wow. Wow, he says that he's receiving a spiritual guidance from the Rebbe. He says, I have come to you at the start, and I intend to return to you many times. Okay, so here was the video, uh, Rebbe giving blessings to Netanyahu and Netanyahu being under his spell, okay? And if you, when you read this article, I have highlighted here for you the last um, paragraph. It says, it really pains me as a friend, as a brother, as a close friend, to see how people constantly spill Netanyahu's blood. But I have a surprise for you. He's going to come out of it, and he will stand tall on God's side. He has a promise from the Rebbe, and he's going to make it through this. We have seen it happen up to now, and that's how it's going to be now as well. He will make it through this, and he will continue. And I hope he'll be able to hand his keys over to Moshiach, the Messiah, and we'll have the complete, and we will have the complete and true redemption. So here we go. He had a promise from the Rebbe. And uh, basically, he, he was going through many difficulties, but Rebbe has prophesied that he's going to come through this and hand the keys to the Moshiach. The question is, is this the true Messiah that they're talking about? Absolutely not. It's not the true Christ. It's not the true kingdom that Christ spoke about, the one that is inside you. We are talking about the Jewish earthly kingdom with the false Messiah. Now, when they're speaking of a complete and true redemption, we need to know the difference between Judaic redemption or what Judaism calls redemption and what Christianity um, identifies as redemption. And about these subjects, uh, I will talk again and soon in a uh, video that I will do um, this week, where I will address the differences between redemption uh, and what it means for Jews and what it means for Christians and how basically the Jewish religion and Christian religion do not mix. They don't go together. So this is why it is extremely surprising that the rabbis of United, uh, not the rabbis, but the pastors evangelical pastors in the United States are happily supporting this coalition of Netanyahu and promoting it as something amazing and something that's from God, when it's obviously is um, for a false kingdom. Well, thank you for your attention. I will be coming back to you very soon, and you ha all have a wonderful night.